Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with Ron Placone and the miserable liberal, Steph Zamorano. Hi, Jimmy. Hi. That's a nice mug you have. Oh, oh man. I'm so jealous. I kind of want my own. Oh, <laughs> different kinds? <laughs> what? Get those. There's a link right underneath. Please help support the show by buying a T-shirt or a mug or something. All right. Right now, we're going to talk about uh, Walmart's approach to unions and labor. Why? Because it's Labor Day weekend. So just so you know, Walmart... Uh, according to Forbes, Walmart workers cost taxpayers $6.2 billion in public assistance. Uh, 20, just so you know, 20 mega companies dominate the minimum wage world. Walmart alone employs 1.4 million minimum wage workers. Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, and KFC is in second place, and McDonald's takes third. Overall, 60% of minimum wage workers are employed by businesses not officially considered small by government standards. Here's this is from the nation. Walmart wages are the main reason people depend on, depend on food stamps. The Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP. So that's food stamps, right? SNAP is food stamps. Okay, so they gutted welfare. Now everybody, you get food stamps and you don't get much. Uh... The, supplement, the SNAP is a means of survival for families earning minimum wage. That's the subtitle to that Nation Magazine tar- article. It says, Walmart isn't paying for those food stamps. You are. The annual bill that states and federal government foot, the, foot for working families making poverty-level wages is $153 billion. So people who have jobs, who work, still need government assistance to eat. That's how poorly we pay people in the United States. To the tune of how much? $153 billion for working families. Families working. That's $153 billion for people working. So that's the government subsidizing companies because they're not paying their workers a living wage. A single Walmart supercenter costs taxpayers between $904,542, so between $900 and $1.75 million per year in public assistance money. So right around a million dollars per, or some, almost two, per Walmart. That's according to Florida Congressman Alan Grayson. In many states, Walmart employees are the largest group of Medicaid recipients. Walmart employees. They're also the single biggest group of food stamp recipients. In other words, those everyday low prices at the chain are in part subsidized by your tax money. Meanwhile, an estimated 18% of food stamps are spent at Walmart. So Walmart hires employees at substandard, well, subliving wage. They have to go on federal assistance. They get, they get their food stamps, and they take it back to Walmart, and they give that food stamp money to Walmart. Do you see what's going on? Yeah, there was a documentary made about this in 2005 uh, called The High Cost of Low Price. It's about Walmart. I've seen It's a great film. I've seen it. It's oh, been I haven't years, seen it. But yeah, it's a, it's so a great they, film. they went over this? They went over all this, and they talk about what Walmart actually costs a community. Because, I mean, right. even if you're somebody that shops there and, you know, they do have low prices. Right. But what you end up really paying— uh, you know, because, I mean, Walmart also doesn't have the best environmental practices. Right. So there are so many levels where Walmart costs the community, and that's why some communities get together and don't let them in. Yeah. Uh, there's not many Walmarts in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. They're, they wanted to put one in, and it's always a big fight, and I say keep them out. Yep. So uh, I tell you all this because it is Labor Day weekend, and here is a Walmart training video, and this guy is going to tell you— you don't need a union, even though you just heard what I said. And Walmart, by the way, the Walmart family now uh, has more wealth than everyone else in the universe. They're worth about $80 billion, mm-hmm. just themselves. $80 billion, just themselves, right? 
So can you ch- check on that? Stuff? Well, I was reading another uh, piece of data, and it talked about all the practices that they do that hurt their employees. Like sometimes they don't pay them. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they exploit undocumented workers. Correct. So like they have one, you know, one horrible business lawsuit. practice after yes. another. Yes. And so like in, in 2005, they had to pay 1.1 million dollars to 845 workers for unpaid wages. Can you imagine in this economy that you have to go and to say, court. please, sir, can I get paid for the work that I rendered? To a huge corporation. Uh, in 2001, Walmart was ordered to compensate 69,000 workers in Colorado for $50 million in unpaid wages. In 2008, Walmart paid a settlement fee of $54.25 million to workers in Minnesota, then had to settle another lawsuit that spanned the country to the tune of $352 million. The settlement covered 63 separate cases in 42 states, uh, and the year of 2005, the Department of Labor ordered Walmart to pay another settlement fee of $4.8 million to 4,500 employees. I mean, they seem like it is typical for them to exploit and not pay and uh, not provide livable conditions for their employees. Um, and in 2016, the Waltons were considered the richest family in America worth $130 billion, <laughs> estimated. Jesus H. Christ. No problem with our system. No problem with our system at all. Wow. Imagine how many people could go to college for that. How many people could get medicine. How many people could have good housing. How many people could live a life. That's amazing. They have $130 billion mm-hmm. and their employees are all on are on assistance. Mm-hmm. You don't think we have a messed up system? So here's what here's a video from those same Walmarts. By the way, Hillary Clinton, proud board member of Walmart. How many years was she on, on the board of Walmart? Literally, Hillary Clinton was on the board of Walmart. And you wonder why people wouldn't fucking vote for her. Okay. It's true. I'm a proud shareholder too. And that's just the beginning of the great thing. So they don't they don't call them employees, they call them shareholders? That's what they're doing. They're calling, I'm yeah. a proud shareholder too. Well, and it's such a falsity because it, it's kind of that same premise of you have access to yeah. health care. Yeah. You have access to stock options. Yeah, right. but your employees can't afford it. Right. It's right. a nice idea if you give them a living wage to where they could take advantage of something like that. Right. But, you know, it's, it's the same falsity. It's like you have access to the best health care. Yes. You can't afford it. Okay. You'll find at our company. Now, it doesn't matter where you work, whether it's in a Walmart store, a Sam's Club, a distribution center, or any other division. We are going to screw you over hard. (laughs) It doesn't matter where you work. Walmart, Sam's Club, distribution center, you are going to be paid a sub-living wage, and you're going to be exploited for America. Okay. You've made a great choice to work for Walmart, and we're glad you're here. But the reality is, you're not the only one looking to get your foot in the door at Walmart. Now, you might have heard stories on the news, read about it in the paper, or seen it on the internet, but labor unions are really interested in Walmart and have spent millions of dollars specifically focused on us. Now, I think you know by now that our company prefers to have open and direct communication with our associates. Look at the way he's kind of like sticking his his chest out. I I think there's somebody behind him with a gun pointed into his back. (laughs) Here at Walmart, we like to have direct and open communications with our shareholders. Was it what did he call them? Sales associates or share shareholders? Oh yeah, that's I. I just want to walk right into the to the general manager's office and tell him I need a raise. <laughs> tell him I should get paid more than everybody else stacking shelves. I, I need a raise. I must, I must, it's free, it's open. I love that kind of open communication where you have absolutely no power. You know, that kind of communication where you walk in individually without the power of a union or your co-workers behind you and you try to negotiate for, I don't know, fair wages or maybe better working conditions or maybe a paid day off or a vacation or something like that. You know how you walk in there and you have absolutely no power. I like how they're saying that unions are targeting <laughs> Walmart. Targeting. Like, a, like a union is some big traveling yeah. smoke monster that yeah. preys on these poor CEOs. Yeah. We don't think that a labor union is necessary here. And because No no kidding. Isn't that something? <laughs> no no shit. <laughs> you guys don't ah I would have thought that the Walmart would have thought you really needed We don't think that we need to pay our 
Yeah, of course you don't need a labor union. This is amazing. Our associates have said time after time that they don't want a union. We usually don't spend a lot of time talking about them. But as a new member of our team, we do think you need to know this. In recent years, union organizers have spent a lot of time, effort, and money trying to convince Walmart associates to join a union, all without any success. Now, while they've been trying to convince associates to join their union, at the same time, they've been spending big money trying to hurt our business. And they've been telling customers not to shop in our stores and clubs. I don't get it. How would it make sense for associates to join any union that wants to damage our reputation? <laughs> I don't get it. You obviously you don't get it. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't get it. Well, she gets it because she's being paid to say this. So she gets it. She gets that she's lying. Why would I want to join an organization that's trying to hurt us? They're not trying to hurt you. They're trying to help the workers. We just don't feel the need for unions, and we don't talk about it much, according to this script that I was told to memorize twenty minutes ago. <laughs> and drive business away from our doors so associates don't get ours? It just doesn't make sense. Funny thing is, I always thought unions were kind of like clubs, you know, or charities that were out to help workers, right? Well, I found out that wasn't exactly the case. Y'all know. You know who's out there to help workers? Walmart. The Walton family. You know who they fly all the employees out every weekend to Wyoming right. where they party with Harrison Ford and Dick Cheney. Sometimes <laughs> they ride in the helicopter. <laughs> That's who's looking out for workers. You know who's looking out for workers? Management at Walmart. <laughs> That's who's looking out for workers. Not unions. Unions hate workers. That's why you go anywhere where there's a union and those people don't get paid anything. No benefits. Whatever. I guess black is white, up is down, in and out. Whatever. It doesn't matter. The opposite. It's opposite day at Walmart. <laughs> Look out! The unions are coming! They're right behind the Russians! We're fucked! The truth is, unions are businesses. Multi-million dollar businesses that make their money by convincing people like you and me to give them a part of our paychecks. So, you have to wonder, are they really just interested in the welfare of Walmart Associates, or is there something more at stake? Here at Walmart... <laughs> yeah, there is there something more at stake? What? This is a this, so this is a video Walmart puts out and they show this to new employees to scare the crap out of them from joining a union. This is this is the kind of stuff Walmart does with their 130 billion dollars. Our associates are used to having a voice in their workplace. Our company has always supported an open door policy and we're used to having our voice heard for free. <laughs> we're used to having our voice heard for free. What when did your voice ever get heard? <laughs> When it what what tell me could you can you point to somewhere where you guys stood up and you demanded action and it happened? No, because if they could, they would show you. Speaking of free, time to discuss our overtime policy. <laughs> Look, I was a union member at my last job. Everyone actually had to join the union in order to work there. Thing I remember most about the union is that they took dues money out of my paycheck before I ever saw it, just like taxes. Believe me, joining a union isn't something I ever want to do again. Here you can get ahead based on your own performance. It's one of the main reasons I chose this company. <laughs> so this guy left a union job to go work at Walmart, one of the worst places in the entire world to work if for workers, because he wanted to be rewarded for his own hard work. Right? That's what he just said? That's, mm -hmm. yep, that's what the script said. That's what the script said. And he sounds so natural reading it, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. He yeah, does. He, he sounds... doesn't sound like he's reading it at all. Mm-mm, no. I'm in control of my own career. <laughs> at Walmart. He's in control. That's what I, the thing I like about working for Walmart is I'm in control. <laughs> Not them. I control things. I tell them when I'm coming in, how much I want to get paid, how much work I want to do, and when I want off, I tell them. What? What could you have no control? You have zero control of your career. You have no union, you could be fired for no cause tomorrow. Today. Overtime, no pay.
No overtime pay. No he- no no sick days. No vacation days. No weekends. And that's that's what life with no union. With the union, you put that control into someone else's hands. <laughs> Someone who might be motivated by something a little more important to them than your career advancement. (laughs) Again, (laughs) again, you know who's you know who cares about you? Walmart Walmart management. That's why we want to get rid of the union because unions are going to hurt you. They're going to take more money from you, and we care about you. We're the Walmart management. (laughs) Here we go. You see. Unions get almost all of their money from monthly dues, initiation fees, and assessments against members. Because union membership has dropped over the years to less than 8% of private employers, unions are fighting to survive. And with the You know it's a, it's a, it's amazing they don't show you also with that decline in union the decline in the amount of profits workers share in. <laughs> I was going to say unions are fighting I, to survive gonna, and so are workers. Gonna, I gonna, private, private employers. So if you you would you could also go oh look how, look at the uh, uh, workers pay also is goes directly with this with the fall of unions it makes it look like oh they're struck yeah why do you think why do you think that again and you can make that connection too you can see the low income or you know you could use that graph and say this is how little you're making in uh, yeah. contrast it this is how much we're profiting yeah on your slave labor. So profits, you just refer, so profits go up and pay goes down without unions. That's what's been happening. That's what happens. Walmart, one of the richest com- companies in the whole goddamn world. And, uh, and, and their employees are all poor. They're not assistants. And we are, I know we know that by having employees watch this that we know this is nefarious. Yes, so this is, yeah, this is horrible. That's, yeah, this is unethical what they're doing. This is lying. This is gaslighting. This is gaslighting, which is a form of lying. Wait, wait, unions are bad? They're telling me unions are bad for me. That's gaslighting. They're telling me that I'm in complete control of my career, yet somehow watching this anti-union propaganda video is training me. <laughs> this is fishy. <laughs> <laughs> unions are fighting to survive. And with the size and scale of our company... You can understand their interest in Walmart. It is a business. And where does Walmart stand on all of this? Our philosophy is simple. We are pro-associate. Here, all associates are free to talk openly with their leaders. I'm completely comfortable sharing my ideas and concerns with my leaders. <laughs> hey, uh, we need to get a raise. You're fired. I would, that was comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> that was really comfortable. I'm glad we're being open. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being open with me. Hey, I think that we have some unsafe work practices. You're fired. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know that they really listen to what I have to say. By using the open door process, I'm encouraged to speak for myself. I speak on my own behalf. And fr- I speak on my own behalf with absolutely no power whatsoever. I do not have the collective power of my coworkers. So when I go in, I'm unbelievably powerless and I'm dismissed but or the, fired. And the open door policy refers to both my boss's door and the exit door for me. Frankly, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Walmart associates should have to have someone to speak for them. It's just not that kind of place. But Walmart understands that not every workplace is like Walmart. That's why our company doesn't criticize people who belong or have belonged to labor unions. What? (laughs) Except for this video. This whole video is that. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. We know that many associates belong to unions. But this is, you know what, watching this, I feel like this is... The equivalent of the DNC's message to progressives. It's just this ridiculous. You know what I mean? How just ridiculous this is. How up is down, black is white, in is out. Same thing with them. Well, we get, can't bring a spoon to a knife fight. That kind of shit. You know? Mm-hmm. We, hey, we get, you got to win elections, so you got to, you know, sell out the whole point of why you're a party. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just as crazy as that. This is just, this is, you know, how you're trying to get people to vote against their own interest. 
That's what this video is. And that's why that reminds you of the DNC. Of the DNC, because now, used to be Republicans got workers to vote for Republicans, which was voting against their own interests. Now the Democratic National DNC has figured out how to get progressives to vote against their own interests. You wag their finger in shame, and you show them Trump. You got to vote for Wall Street because of Trump. You got to vote for military industrial complex because of Trump. You got to vote for fracking because of Trump. You got to vote for big oil and big pharma because of Trump. That's it. Former jobs. At some companies, the employees have no choice and have to join a union just to keep their jobs. And we understand that. We also know that most union members shop in our store. Yeah, you know why they have to join a union just to get their job? Because it's a union shop. And you don't get to go in and undermine it. That's why. That's, that's why. Because that's how unions work. Because they get to then experience the protections of unions. And we know that workers in unions make more money than workers who aren't in unions. So they don't let someone come in and undermine their union that helps workers. That's not being mean. <laughs> that's not being controlling. That's called a protection. That's called a worker protection. That's a worker protection. We have a union here. That's how it works. Why do we have one? Because we all voted. We all decided we want one. And now if you want to work here, you have to join this union. And guess what? It's a free country. If you don't want to join a union, go work somewhere where they don't have one. They're fucking everywhere. Oh, I just, if I'm being violated because I have to join a union at the one place in the whole state that still has a union. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Clubs nationwide. I talk to them all the time, and I hear them complain about their jobs and their union representatives. Oh. I can tell you. You know, nobody complains about Walmart or the Walmart management. <laughs> <laughs> no one. I hear them complain about their unions, believe me. That every job has its ups and downs, and a union can't change that fact. I look at it this way. With what we have here, I'm not willing to trade it for a union that doesn't know anything about me or my goals. Today, if I have an idea... <laughs> this guy's goals? <laughs> to barely survive on a minimum wage. That's my goal. So, you know, just to clarify that uh, if... You know, their average is about $8, okay? So that means they're making, as a full-time employee, about $15,000 a year. Why would you want a union? Okay, <laughs> why would you need a union? Now, uh, from this one article, it, it highlights that... Well, article from where? Uh, it is from aljazeera.com uh -huh. in 2012, and it says... Um, the Walton family has more wealth than the bottom 42% of Americans combined. In 2010, the CEO, Michael Duke's salary of $35 million in one hour. He makes more than a full-time employee makes in an entire year. Why do you need a union? Why would you need a union? <laughs> what about my goals? <laughs> You know, the most ironic part about this whole thing is that I bet in real life, this person's goal is to get a sag after card. I bet you. So this is an it's actor. probably the real goal. So this is an actor, and his real goal is to be, be in the actor's union, which is sag after. And let me tell you something. If it wasn't for sag after, I would have never made money in show business because I would have paid them to be on TV. So thank God for uh, a union that helps workers not get exploited actually get to share in the profits that you're creating. That's the point of a union. You get to share in the profits. Since 1980, American workers have not shared in the profits. So it used to be the more production workers did, the more stuff their company made, the more money they got paid. No longer. They make more product, their pay stays the same. Company makes more money. They make more product. Company makes more money. Their pay stays the same. So productivity and pay is no longer coupled. It has been decoupled. So it doesn't matter how hard you pay work, no matter how much you produce, you're not getting paid anymore. If you're concerned, I speak directly with my supervisor, and I'd much rather deal with things that way, one-on-one. -on -one. Again, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, where I have absolutely no power to negotiate, none whatsoever. I like that kind of feeling. When a union begins to push their agenda, union organizers ask associates to sign authorization cards or petitions. 
Union organizers might say that giving them your name and address doesn't mean much. They might tell you that it's just a simple way for you to get more information about the union. Or they might even promise you things like free health care or wage increases just to get your interest. It's not hard to imagine how far a union organizer might go to get you to sign their card. He, you mean he's going to promise <laughs> that he might help you? He might even help you, p promise you higher wages. You might be able to go to the doctor. <laughs> They're going to promise you anything to get you to sign this card. I like how they keep saying the union agenda and they can't really go further on that. Yeah. They can't because well, what's the union agenda to look out for workers? Well, she also That's said well, but she, she mentions that uh, they may promise you he free health care. Yeah. Oh my god. What how why is that awful? What yeah, what are, and what are you guys promising? <laughs> <laughs> we're promising no health care. But you know that we're being straight shooters about it. Yeah. Don't be fooled. Your signature is very valuable. She's right. Your signature on an authorization card or petition is actually a legal document that can be used to bring in a union. If a union gets enough signatures, you may never even have a chance to vote. What your signature really means is that you give the union the right to act for you and make decisions for you on workplace issues, whether you agree with them or not. And once you yeah, I disagree with the union fighting to get me a higher wage and more worker protections, more off time and better health benefits. I disagree with them. What the fuck would you disagree with? Even if you disagree with them, getting you more money and stuff. <laughs> Why would you? They don't they don't ever point out how you would disagree with them. They never point that no. out. No. So they just make it seem like unions just a big scam to get money out of you. They don't help you. They don't do anything for you. And we want to keep them out of here because we want to help you. That's what Walmart's telling you right now. Um, this is this is immoral. I want to hear more details about this guy's union life. I mean, I bet yeah. it was terrible. All the hour long lunch breaks he had ha! to take that they made him take and paid him for, and all that all that PTO. So you get it. So after six hours working at a Walmart, you get a forty five minute break. They pay you for fifteen minutes of that break. <laughs> Did you know that? No. Okay. Give them your signature. You'll never be able to get back if you change your mind. Walmart can't tell you what to do. Whether you give someone your signature is always your decision to make. Oh. But you need to know how serious it is. It's hard to think that one little signature can be so important. But in today's world, your signature means a lot. Wow. They don't even want you to sign that card. They don't even want you to sign yeah, it. Yeah, they're wow. really... Your signature, your... Si oh, my signature is valuable? Now, oh, wait a minute. I've got power? So they're trying to make them feel like you have power to say no to a union. That's when you have power. That's when you have power. This to is say a no. long ass training video wow. on anti union. Anti union. Like, what else is in the video? To be honest, I don't like handing my signature over to anyone, much oh. less to unions who seem to be spending so much time trying to hurt my company. My signature is too valuable for that, and so is yours. Too valuable. We've got a great thing going here. Great benefits, job security, career opportunities. It's important to remember, signing a union card isn't just about you. You could also be affecting the people who have worked here for years and enjoy Walmart for the same reasons we do. People like me. And me. Who like being underpaid. <laughs> people like me, who uh, don't, I, I don't go to the doctor when I'm sick. People like me. And me. We've all found a home with Walmart. And we're glad that you've joined the team. Good luck with your new career. And we hope that you never have to deal with a union organizing drive in your facility. But if you do, we hope that this video has given you the information you need to stay in control of your valuable signature and your career. Welcome to Walmart. Unless you disagree with this video. Wow. And if you disagree with this video, we'll be firing you. Wow. So, you know, Jimmy, you had mentioned that Hillary Clinton was on the board of Walmart. Yes, she was. So in 2012, evidently, there is an organization called the Clinton Global Initiative in New York. Mm -hmm. And Bill Clinton challenged, um, asked Walmart, you know, um, would you open a Walmart in Libya? He asked who? He asked uh, the CEO, Duke, at the time. Of Walmart? Uh-huh. Would you open a Walmart uh, in where? Yeah, in uh, Libya. If the new president of Libya asked you to open a store in Tripoli, would you consider it? 
Clinton asked Duke. And uh, the article goes on to say that Walmart's exploitation, exploitive business model is the last thing that Libya needs, which according to the International Labor, Labor Rights Forum, makes billions in profits by forcing workers overseas to stay on the job for 16 to 18 hours a day with no overtime, paying up to 30% below the country's legal minimum wage, denying female workers their legal maternity leave and benefits, refusing to provide basic safety equipment, denying workers in the right of freedom of association, and requiring workers to get a ticket and permission to use the restroom. Really? So, but uh, that paragraph doesn't mention the open door policy. What about I mean, the open I, I door policy? Biased, you know, maybe the maybe door? these people only just had to go talk to their manager, say, hey, by the way, do you mind paying me fairly? And everything would have been solved. <laughs> this is what we're up against, against Walmart. And, um, I didn't I didn't even know they were trying to unionize Walmarts. I can't believe how hard it is. So that's how what that's what they do to trick workers into voting against their own interests. They do stuff like that. They intimidate them, they make them afraid. Their open door policy is an open door to make sure you better vote against that union or you know you're going to be out on your ass. So uh fuck Walmart hard and again, I know uh, some people, uh, I don't ever shop at Walmart if I don't have to. So if I can avoid Walmart, I do. One time I couldn't. We were on the road, uh, had a breakdown, whatever. We had to go into a Walmart and get some equipment. And uh, it really bothered me. But, you know, you can't cut your nose off to spite your face. And, uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time I don't uh, shop at Walmart. Um, they're horrible and they, you know, all you, all it really needs is a union Walmart. It would, it, it, it could take that company into a, into a company that provides a living. They have the money. The people who own the company are worth $130 billion. What if they just took a billion and gave it to their employees? I wonder how much money that would raise them so that they could afford it. It's totally. So if they had a union, it would be a decent, it'd be like when, when I was a kid, Sears and Roebuck. Sears was a big, if you had a job at Sears, you had a good job. Some people had jobs selling appliances. Some people had jobs selling lawnmowers. Some people had jobs selling shoes at, at Sears. That was their job. Some guys sold suits at Sears. Some guy, that's what they did for a living, grown-ups. And they had a house and kids and they went to college. So you could have a real job working at a company, but we've decoupled, again, the people who generate the profits don't get to share in the profits anymore because we got rid of unions because uh, Bill Clinton and the Democrats don't fight for unions. That's why. Because Ronald Reagan decimated the unions and now the Democrats and the Republicans both work hand in hand decimating unions, outsourcing good jobs. That's what happens. You take good jobs in America. You turn them into shitty jobs, you ship them overseas to a poorer person in a more desperate situation. And then you tell that person who had a good job here, go get a job at uh, Walmart. <laughs> so um, it's Labor Day. Let's uh, remember we got to support unions. That's one of the that's the big, big, big way to help push back against the plutocrat bastards. <laughs> Everybody, we have two live Jimmy Dore shows in September. September 25th, we're in San Diego, and September 18th in Burbank, California. Get your tickets right there. There's a link right there.